I'm back with the brave Yeonmi Park. She is the author, well, she's the author of In Order to Live, A North Korean Girl's Journey to Freedom, but now the new book, While Time Remains, A North Korean Defector's Search for Freedom in America. I just finished reading it. It's a terrific book. Um, and uh, you can follow Yeonmi Park at Twitter. It's at Yeonmi, Y-E-O-N-M-I, Park, and then NK, NK for North Korea. Uh, Yeonmi, um, you say, I'm reading now really from the preface, when I tell my American friends and colleagues that certain developments in the United States remind me of North Korea, they typically cock their heads and smirk. Uh, and then you go on to say that as you talk about the fact that a small elite in this country, just like over there, is setting the agenda and ruthlessly enforcing it against the common people, they kind of look away in embarrassment. Uh, talk a little bit about what you think, what do you think is going on with these progressives? There appears to be a kind of unwillingness to face reality. What do you attribute that to? I think that's the, it's really kind of going towards the destruction of critical thinking. In North Korea, we didn't even have a word for critical thinking. There's a lot of words that we didn't have because the regime was not letting us to think. The reason why I'm fighting for freedom of speech is that humans are unique. We think by talk. I mean, we, we think by talking. So if you do not let people talk, they cannot think. So in America, okay, for the these trigger warnings in the name of safe space, they do not let us talk about many things, mostly anything they disagree with. And I think that's the biggest power that I see in America. And I actually really genuinely ask people, do you really not censor yourself? And they all do. And when they're laughing at North Korea, it's like, are they crazy or are they are stupid or robots? Why would they not start a revolution? In North Korea, if you stand up against the regime, you are going to kill three generations of your family. In America, currently, you stand up against political correctness, you might lose your like livelihood. You might destroy your reputation and dignity. Even that little consequence, people are still not standing up, most of them. Remarkable. Uh, let's talk about Chicago. You were on Michigan Avenue in Chicago with your two-year-old son. Uh, you were attacked um, by uh, a couple of women who, I guess, grabbed your stuff. They began to fish purse. through your purse. They punch you in the chest. Talk about what happened after that. So, yeah, this is the time of the BLM protest where my mom was also residing in Chicago with me. Um, seeing the city was burning down and the grocery stores were getting looted where I could not go there to buy milk for my son. There's a checkpoint. I mean, these are real like gang mafias. The media was saying, oh, there's really no violence. One day I was walking on the Michigan Avenue and get robbed by these women. And afterwards, that was what really woke me up about America. These women were, unfortunately, were black women. And I was, unfortunately, an Asian person whose like skin color is not oppressed, right? So the people around the street circle around me and yelling at me that I'm a racist because I was trying to call the police on these criminals. I mean, what you were and, doing, you say, you describe it, you were trying to turn on your phone so you would record yeah. who had robbed yeah. you. You were trying to mm -hmm. probably call for help. You go, uh, one person shouts that you're a racist, another person says a person's skin color doesn't yeah. make them a thief. Of course, you're not saying that their skin color made you a thief. They actually robbed you. They punched me too. They were like, you're kidding me. So, of course, it, it was, they seen that was I was beating us and they still do that. In their eyes, they cannot think critically. Like in North Korea, after my escape, somebody had to teach me that Kim Jong Il was fat. Like I never, I mean, all I believe was that she was suffering like us. And these people, all they could see was how these people can harm somebody. They are victims, right? These black women were victims. They could not never ever do something you know, oppressive to other person. So they lost common sense. And they were yelling at me, I'm, I'm a racist. And that's when I realized it's not just the universities are crazy. This ideology sifted through the older public. Now, even in, in just on the street, that common sense is lost, that we do not defend the victims, actual victims. Do you think, Yanmi, that all of this has been made uh, radically worse because of COVID? And I say that because um, the justification, you know, there's a pandemic. 
um, and, 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 and censorship became far worse than it was before due to that. People are spreading misinformation about health, even uh, uh, movements and social control. The idea that you could stop a church service, the idea you could make right. businesses close down. Under normal conditions, I think this could not happen in America. But uh, in, in fact, when I think back historically, it's only happened in wartime. In wartime, the country does become a little bit of a police state. But then after World War I or World War II, the police state is dismantled and life returns to normal. But it seems to me with COVID, uh, that became a sort of police state situation. And there are lots of people who want to keep it that way. Even, even now, they don't want to take down the COVID restrictions. They seem to like the idea of having this level of enhanced social control. What do you think? It's, it's really, I blame the left. I was living through this time and there are people literally breaking into stores, breaking into children's hospital. They would sell fire on these prescription drugs so people could not take this medicine. It's absolutely pure evil act, but the mayor would not order police to arrest these criminals. Just standing there, watch these people. So it's really depending on who deserves justice or not. Like if uh, they just, they, they don't get arrested. And there's no rule of law, that was a complete chaos. And I don't think that was even COVID. They were really trying to, it took whatever it is, they were going to get Trump out of office. I think that's why they were, I mean, I we were like literally in Chicago, we were thinking if Trump gets elected, this city is gonna go under fire. We need to flee this city. Chicago was gonna get destroyed. Um, in some sense, when Biden was elected, okay, now maybe some rule of law can come back because now they, they have to defend some, you know, safety. I think it's a lot of factors of the pandemic. They're using this to, you know, I'm going to protect you. Therefore, I need to take some rights away from you. But then also it was all for taking Trump out of the office effort that they were just showing us what happens if we disagree with their, you know, elites. Unbelievable. Uh, great book, guys. You got to get it. It's by Yeonmi Park. It's called Wild Time Remains, a North Korean defector's search for freedom in America. Uh, Yeonmi, uh, great to see you and thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me.